Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm back with the Udo X86 Advanced Plus and I'm testing Android 7.1.2. This is Android X86 running from an external 60 gigabyte SSD. As you can see, we have the Udo X86. This has four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM built in. The CPU is an Intel Celeron 3160 at 1.6 gigahertz and it does turbo up to about 2.3. It is a quad core CPU and it says Intel Cherry Trail, but I think it's a Braswell. I'm pretty sure it is. The GPU is an Intel HD 400, does OpenGL ES 3.1, Android 7.1.2, NuGet. And like I said, this is running from an external 60 gigabyte SSD. It's Android x86. I'll leave links in the description if you want to try it out on your own PC. In this video, I'm just going to test out some benchmarks and a few native Android games. First up, we have Antutu. In all of these tests, I did have a fan on the heatsink, so it's not throttling the CPU. We scored a 71,558. Not too good. 3D performance is decent, but then again, we're still dealing with the Intel HD 400 GPU. I couldn't get ranking to work but I can assure you this is actually really low for Antutu and newer Android phones. Next test I ran was 3D Mark. We did a Slingshot Extreme and an Ice Storm Unlimited. For Slingshot Extreme, we scored a 1,478. For Ice Storm Unlimited, we scored a 21,117. Little on the lower end, not too bad though. We'll go into Best Devices. These are the Slingshot Extreme tests here. The Apple iPad Pro for 2017 comes on top with a 4,586. Next up, the Nvidia Shield. The Udo X86 only scored a 1,478, so we're down in the list a bit here. We'll find something to compare it with. And the Nexus, is that the 6P? Yeah, that has a Snapdragon 810, so we're right around that, a little bit above it. Not bad. I'll get the list sorted so we can check out the Ice Storm Unlimited scores. We're way down here. As you can see, the new iPad is dominating the field right now, but we still have the Nvidia Shield TV on up here with a 45,000. We only scored a 21,117. So we're way down the list again. We could just keep scrolling until we find something comparable, but it's going to be a lower end, older phone. The S7 still comes out on top above the Udo, the in here. And yeah, even the ZTE Pro is a little higher. I mean, it's not that bad for an x86 platform running Android and coming in at about 150 bucks for this board. It's way cheaper than even a used S7 right now. Moving on to Geekbench 4. I ran the CPU benchmark and the compute test. We'll go with the CPU benchmark first. Single core, 917. Multi-core, 2,861. Not great at all. I have a few ARM-based single board computers that score around 5,000 for the multi-core and 2,000 to 3,000 for the single core. With compute, we're way down here with a 1,025 for the compute score. But here's the deal, guys. This board was not specifically designed to run with Android. This is an x86 CPU meant for Windows and different x86 Linux builds. So the interface runs smooth. YouTube web browsing is great, but a lot of these apps don't work. Netflix doesn't work. Keep trying it over and over again with different builds and I can't get it to work. I also tried Bully, does not work. San Andreas, same thing. So we need specific x86 APKs for a lot of this stuff to work. PPSSPP won't launch, and I knew it wouldn't launch, I just wanted to try it anyway. There is an older version that does work on these x86 CPUs, but I didn't even try to download it. You could always run Remix OS on this or Phoenix OS. We're gonna launch YouTube, and then we're gonna do the side-by-side -side screen with, let's say, YouTube and Chrome. This is a cool feature with NuGet. I'll find something in here to watch. 
have a few other x86 single board computers like the Upboard and the Latte Panda. The sound doesn't work over HDMI using Android, but this board does work. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi also work out of the box with Android x86. I wanted to test some native Android games and we're going to go with Asphalt Extreme. It actually works very good on this board. For that game and Minecraft, I've been using a Razer Servo Bluetooth controller and it connects up and works perfectly. Android Pocket Edition for Android works on a lot of devices. As you can see here, gameplay is pretty smooth. If you do notice any lagging, you can always turn the rendering chunks down, get way better performance out of it. I just left it stock the way it comes from the App Store. I'm going to do a dynamite test real quick. Let me set this up. Let's try to blow this mountain up. Now this used to crash phones and stuff like that when Pocket Edition first came out, but I haven't been able to crash any phones. This game is very highly optimized for a lot of different devices. They've done such a great job with Minecraft Pocket Edition. And you'll have no trouble at all running it on your Udo x86 using Android. Overall, Android on the Udo x86 is very smooth. The interface works, YouTube works, internet browsing is flawless. You're going to run into some compatibility issues, but other than that, everything seems to work pretty decent. If you're interested in running this on your Udo, all you have to do is flash it to a USB drive using Rufus and install it to the internal EMC, an external hard drive, or an M.2 SATA. Very easy to set up. It installs, boots right up, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and sound work. I'll leave links down below to the x86 website. But there are tons of Android boxes that perform just as well as this. For a little bit cheaper, you can get a $60 Android box that benchmarks around the same as this and the performance is going to be a little better because it's an arm chip everything should be compatible with it so that's pretty much it for this video guys i did test n64 performance isn't stellar it does work retro arch will work dreamcast works but not as well as the nvidia shield tv i really wanted to get this out of the way because i'm going to be moving to linux and testing some retro pie and other linux distributions on the udo x86 like always, thanks for watching.